in low densities where animals have got no they've got no worry about finding food on these offshore islands and these sanctuaries there's a lot of food around but they're always trying to find a mate and that's a lot more difficult when there are not many animals in the area so we tried to take advantage of that and we were looking at pheromones for possums to see if we could use those as an attractant and as a lure. And what we found is that we, when we use it in a standard sort of trap setup, it improves the um, trap efficiency by about 25%. I think all, all pests are interested in finding a mate, so I think it's got applica wide applications across several species. The problem we had um, when we found out that the urine worked as a really good lure for the possums, that female urine was a really good attractant for both male and female possums because the male are interested in the mate and the female want to know who's in their, in their area because they're quite competitive. Um, what we found is, well, we couldn't go around and use possum urine all the time because it's not that easy to collect and we had to try and work out a way of making a synthetic lure based on the same compounds that are found in natural product. We talked to some people at Plant and Food Research and they really know how to separate out compounds and scent and we looked for the compounds that were present in the females but not present in the males and that was made life a lot easier for us because we're only about 11 compounds. We then um, tested a few at a time in the possum pens and we were able to identify just five that seemed to be particularly attractive to both male and female possums. And that's what's going into the synthetic lures that we're about to start testing in the field now. We actually came up with the concept because the Department of Conservation were having trouble trapping some stoats up in Kapiti Island. And they had a lot of feed up there, the stoats, so they weren't interested in food lures. So we sent them some bedding material. And at that time we had some female stoats that were in season. They were ready to be mated. And we found that that bedding material was really attractive to the male stoat. So they'd been trapping for three months up there and then they brought down the bedding material and they caught that male within about 10 days. If we're going to get towards a predator free New Zealand, one of the steps along the way is to become more efficient and be able to catch possums more easily and cheaper and these sort of lures will be very helpful. Also we're going to be dealing with populations of animals at very low densities and they may be hard to find that last one or two possums or stoats so if we use a, a non-food based lure like a pheromone lure I think this may be a really good way to get that last find that last animal and catch it. There hasn't been a lot of work done around um, vertebrate pheromones and we come from an insect um, invertebrate pheromone type background uh, we had a bit of work to do that was new in that field and did a bit of digging in the literature and things and yeah, found some alternative techniques and started analysing those headspace samples of the urine. The way we did that was we um, warmed up the urine actually to body temperature and then we were measuring um, the headspace volatiles coming off that so that's just the aromas coming off that we, and we collected those with a polymer fibre that was absorbent to, uh, so those molecules were attracted to the polymer fibre would stick to it and then we'd thermally dissolve those into a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer to try and identify what compounds that were coming off the urine could be potentially used as an attractant for the possums. We were very lucky that they were commercially available compounds so that they were already known to science so we didn't have to go through the whole process of A, you know, complex identifications and then B, actually synthesising and making the molecules. For the insect pests, there's um, been thousands of pheromone identifications and communication chemicals are known throughout science, whereas with the vertebrates, there's only, you know, a few uh, pheromone identifications to date, you know, like, um, so yeah, it would be a real, real breakthrough.